Well, welcome yes. back to track <laughs> one of the World Camp Europe. And I'm so proud and happy and thrilled to uh, introduce the next speakers. Um, the title is Fixing the Ladder, Getting More Women in Leadership at WordPress Businesses. Um, and uh, we have Shiobon McCune and Dee Teal uh, in a conversation today. So Shiobon is a co-founder of WP Includes, is the COO, I think that's the Chief Operating Officer, of Human Made. It's an enterprise WordPress development agency. She has experience in people operations and operations at the director and ex executive level. They're also people. Uh, she's one of the founders of WordCamp Europe, has led WordPress documentation project, written a book about the history of WordPress project, and she's passionate about supporting more women into leadership roles, both in and outside the WordPress ecosystem. Thank you. A round of applause for Shoban. And with her is uh, Dee. Um, she has been using WordPress since 2008 as a web developer since 2009 and later transitioned to being a project manager for a large scale project made in WordPress. She used her project management skills to lead the historic lease release of WordPress 5.6 Simone. And uh, she is obviously a huge fan of the WordPress community. She is an organizer and mentor with WP Includes and a co-host on the podcast Future of Team. She has organized WordPress events, speaking and sharing her enthusiasm for the community at them whenever she gets the opportunity, both at home and around the world. Big round of applause for DTL. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, take it away. Thank you, Birgit. Thank you, Birgit. Hello, everybody. So we decided instead of standing up in front of you and waving our arms around, we're just going to have a chat. And you get to watch us have a chat for the next sort of 30 minutes or so. Yes, indeed. So hello, everybody. So Andy, let's start. Why, why are you here? Why am I here? Well, because I've been involved in WordCamp since about 2011, I have watched and seen so many people's trajectory grow and change uh, through the WordPress project and through their businesses and careers. Um, I've seen that happen for a lot more men than women, and I'm here to talk about it because I'm uh, very interested in seeing that happen for more women. Yep. Why are you here? So I am here because I've been involved with WordPress since about 2010, and I've had a really great career within WordPress. I'm obviously CEO of Human Made now, and I think the further I've gone along in my career and the more senior I've got, the fewer women that I'm interacting with. Yep. Um, and, you know, we had... Uh, sort of last year, we were organizing a panel, an enterprise panel at WordCamp Europe, and it was actually really challenging to get senior women to come and speak at that panel. And uh, at that time, I was just like, where, where are the women at, at this level? Uh, where are the women at the more senior level? So this is why we started WP Includes um, and why we wanted to talk about it here today. But I think we can start with just a big headline stat. So we did some research on Five for the Future organizations, uh, and out of the 200 companies, 4.1% have a named uh, female as their CEO or president or you know managing director or whatever that is. Um, that's only eight companies. Yeah. So it's really not many, uh, and these are all sorts of different kinds of companies. You know, everything from like organizations that are two to 10 people to, you know, plus a thousand. Um, so just to break down the statistics a little bit more, uh, 3.6 had both a man and a woman as their sort of lead. 20% um, we were unable to identify, but 72.3 were led by a man. By men. Yeah. So really is at that top level, uh, many, many men. And just for a bit of comparison, 10.4% uh, um, of Fortune 500 companies are run by women yeah. compared to 4% of WordPress companies. And in the UK, 16% of SMEs uh, are led by women. So where did you pull this data from? 
So first of all, I asked ChatGPT, but that was junk. <laughs> so I didn't get very far with that. I thought I was going to save myself loads of time. Yeah. Didn't save any time. I just wasted time. Um, so I asked Angela Jin uh, to send me the list of the WordPress Five for the Future contributors yeah. uh, who pledged to it. I thought that was a good sort of data set to start with. Um, and then we just went through them one by one. We looked them up on LinkedIn. We found out who their leader was. We looked at their company size, where they're from. And this is all data that we're going to include in the survey results Before, later this yeah. year with a bit more analysis around right. it. Yeah. So. And what else does that tell us? Uh, oh, I've gone forward. Ah. <laughs> what else does it tell us? I think those five for the future organizations are really broad in yeah. terms of what they are. So we have got like big geographical spread. Uh, a lot of companies in India, a lot of companies in Indonesia, a lot of in Europe, a lot of in America. But it's, it's very geographically spread and also very different in terms of size. So you've got everything from like maybe a couple of people who are like sort of freelancing together to the likes of GoDaddy yeah. and Newfold and, yeah. you know, organizations like that. And so it's actually, it's kind of a difficult pool of people to compare to one another because they are actually... There's so much diversity in there. So much yeah. diversity and it's yeah. like, um, you know, the only thing that holds them together is the fact that they're tech and WordPress. And WordPress um, yeah. Yeah. Earlier in your career in WordPress, you researched and wrote a book about, a his about the history of the project. Do you have any thoughts on factors that might have led to those statistics or the disparity between? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, um, I researched a book about the history of WordPress. Some of you may have read it. It's called Milestones, the History of WordPress. It was as part of the 10-year celebration of WordPress. Um, so I interviewed 48 people for the book uh, from the early days of the project. Um, 43 of them were men and five were women. Wow. Um, and that, I was really actively looking for women to interview uh, for, for the book. Um, but that's kind of, when I, when I look back at the, the interviews are all online on archive.wordpress.org. Um, and yeah, that's what the breakdown was, which is kind of sad. Um, the first WordCamp was in 2006 in San Francisco. Uh, here it is. We've got the schedule up here. This was a tentative schedule, which was published online. They're all men, all of the speakers, and you can see the audience. I mean, you can't really pick out exactly, but you know, there was a lot of men there. Um, and then fast forward six years to the first WordPress Community Summit. Is anyone there here? A few of you, hello. Yeah, we were there. As uh, Tom, I met Tom there and met many people from WordPress. So this is a photograph of all of us. This was an invite only event. Um, and the list of people who were invited is still on make.wordpress.org. Uh, it was like core developers, uh, you know, designers, all sorts of different people. And it says on the post there was other big deals from the community of WordPress makers, themers, plugin devs, consultants, agencies, hosting companies translators, WordCamp and Meetup organizers. I was absolutely flabbergasted that I got invited. I was doing a bit of writing for Smashing Magazine at the time and right. was like, oh my goodness, they were invited me. They um, noticed me. Yeah. But probably because there wasn't any many women to invite. So we had 122 men were invited and 14 women. And you can see in the picture here, there's a, a lot more men uh, than women who were invited to the event. And that, you know, it was wonderful. It opened so many doors for me, just being there and being with all of those people. Um, I uh, got lots of freelancing and job offers. I ended up getting a job at Audrey Capital. Um, I met Tom, who's over there. He's the CEO of Human Made. I'm not, well, I'm not the CEO. All those doors were opened. And when you look at this picture here of 12 years ago, so many of these people are running those big WordPress companies now, the plugin developers, the agencies. Um, and the network that, that was created in that moment was really solid, and there was not many women went there. Uh, oh, it works. But it's not just WordPress, of course, where there's more men than women. Uh, WordPress was started in the early 2000s yeah. uh, at a time when women were still, they weren't really encouraged into right. STEM. Interestingly, it wasn't always that way. Uh, at its peak in 1984 to 85, 37.1% of degrees that were conferred uh, in the computer sciences were earned by women. Earned by, women. Right, yeah. by 2000 to 2004, 2005, that number had dropped to 22%. 
in 2014-15 down to 18%. Most recent figures that I could find were for 2017-2018 and it's sitting now at, at about 20, or sitting then at about 20%. So what happened in 1984? What did happen? Personal computers started showing up at homes and they were marketed towards the boys, yep. to, the, to the men. Sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so, so even when I look at that and I think of those people that would be at leadership level now that might have done degrees in STEM at those times, the pool is still so much smaller, even just because of that. Yeah. Does my head in. But we didn't, I didn't have a personal computer at home until I'd well and truly left home and somebody made me one. So, yeah. Yeah, and those, those sort of young boys and young men who in 84, 85, 86 through the 80s would have been getting those personal commuters. They yeah. started hacking around and they were getting yeah. the magazines with a floppy disk sent to yeah. them. And then they were discovering open source projects. Yeah. And, you know, I certainly didn't feel that that was something that was for me. Yeah, exactly. Same. Yeah. Yeah. I was at high school uh, in 1984 learning Pascal, learning to program in Pascal and learning to program in BASIC and was showing aptitude towards this. But again, because there was nobody there at school that would encourage me to say, hey, you're good at this. Mm. Here are some places for you to go. Yeah. So I never picked up, and it was only 12, 14 years later that I ended up circling back. Yeah, I rem remember when I was a kid, uh, the consoles belonged to my brothers. Yeah. And I was able, to, allowed, if I was lucky, to sit and watch my brothers play Zelda or play whatever, but it, w it wasn't really mine, and it felt like, you know, maybe when they were out, I could have a little go, but it, I was never expected to be good at Zelda, which my brother always told me. Um, and it certainly wasn't something that was my hobby. Yeah, yeah. So we're seeing now this, these gaps as a flow on effect from that in a lot of ways. So let's talk about the survey. Yeah. Why did you think it was a good idea? So I have all of this feeling about um, gender in, WordPress businesses, and I, I, I'm talking about businesses specifically because I think the core project has done a lot over the past 10 years to encourage um, more gender diversity within the core team, within the you know, uh, release teams, and I, I think what they've done is absolutely wonderful. But I haven't seen that reflected in businesses. Oh, that's what I felt, and I very much don't like to make decisions or make grand claims just based on my own feelings, right. um, because I think they need to be validated. So we decided, well, let's do a survey. I mean, that's a good starting point to at least get some data points that isn't just me being kind of pissed off about things. And being <laughs> like, oh. Awesome. So can you talk us through some of those initial results? Yeah, sure. So we've had 275 respondents so far. I see maybe two to 300 people in this room. So if you haven't responded, maybe we'll get another 200 there. We'll have a QR code at the end for you to fill it in. We've had more women than men fill it in. So really encourage men to fill it in as well because we want to get really rich data set. And if only women fill it in, we won't have any points of comparison. Um, and I, you know, I want to be surprised. I don't want to just validate my own biases and my own assumptions. Um, so I'll go through a couple of the stats because, like I said, the survey's still open. We're going to publish a full report, which we'll share um, around September time. Um, so these are some of the policies that we asked, and I can't actually see because this is very small here. <laughs> um, so the thing that really stands out for this one on me is around flexible working. Flexible working is hugely important for anyone who's got uh, uh, caring responsibilities. Um, you know, being able to balance both your work and the other responsibilities that you've got in your life, whether that is, a, you know, children, whether that's a partner who, ha who you need to care for, or your parents. Um, you know, we go through these phases of caring within our life. And so we're, we're WordPress businesses, because we're open source and we're kind of used to working remotely and we're kind of used to like, oh, we're going to write code whenever. It's like middle of the night or middle of the day and interacting in an asynchronous way. So kind of set up for that. Um, and great to see some organizations have got enhanced parental leave. Um, that's really important. But a lot of the other sort of policies that support women, say like uh, around childcare, around menopause, uh, around breastfeeding, uh, you know, pay transparency, it's kind of behind, I would say, in this. Yeah. What do you think, Dee? Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like the flexible working thing is, is almost a byproduct of the, of the way that, that we kind of work and that 
Um, we're seeing more and more in the market people talking about menopause leave, which is, you know, fairly newly... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, menopause is fairly newly discussed, but it's going even further yeah. uh, into, into the workplace now, which is really great. But, um, yeah, just this whole sense of making those policies and being transparent and clear about it, yeah, uh, it makes a big difference to the kind of people that you can actually track if you are yeah, uh, trying to increase the diversity in your workplace. Yeah, I mean, I'm also quite involved with like the remote work community, which is kind of adjacent to WordPress. Um, and you know, the whole thing there is like flexible working, remote work is not a benefit. Yeah, it's, just it's just part of your operating model. Yeah. You know. So actually, when you take away thinking about that as a benefit, a lot of the WordPress companies have yeah. you know, got work to do. I mean, we all have work to do. Um, so this question is around, because I can't see it. Well, it's the people or persons who usually spearhead gender issues at your company. Uh, what I think the thing that's telling for me, we can see there that uh, the, the majority that, that are taking that on are women or gender diverse. Um, very small percentage of men spearheading that. But I thought that was interesting just how few people know mm. who's spearheading yeah, it. Absolutely. So that says to me either it's not something that's been talked about or um, it's not clear and transparent within the company. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, as we saw earlier, 4% of the, the CEOs of uh, WordPress companies are women. Uh, the rest of our majority of the rest are men. Um, and men hold the power often. You know, these are often the founders. They, um, like, you know, you might be the only woman on a like male executive team or a leadership team, but it's the women who are having to push into those spaces. So you're already starting from a space where you don't have power. I mean, you might have some nominal power because of your role, but, but you don't, you know, the men, by default, generally have got power, but you're having to push into that space and to have more men actually spearhead gender issues. And I know sometimes when I speak to men about it, they're like, oh, but it's really weird for a man to, um, you know, be, be that person. And I feel kind of awkward and I feel like I'm stepping into women's spaces. But like, I, I think taking responsibility for as, as, you, as a company, for you as a leader is really important. And opening up those spaces so that it is sharing that load. Yep. Let's go on. So this one is around office housework. So when it comes back to validating assumptions, my assumption was that women were going to be putting like 80% on this and men were going to be like putting two. Um, but it's, it's a lot closer than, than I, mm -hmm. I thought. But like definitely, I certainly find myself as the note taker or the... the uh, dinner booker, or the, uh, well, I do book excellent restaurants. <laughs> um, I, I work in a hybrid situation at the moment, so we're in the office two days a week, and it's, uh, it's the guys that leave the pots and pans floating around, or finish that cup of coffee and leave it on the desk, and it's the, often, the women complaining to each other going, we're just going to leave them there so that somebody else will do it. I am one of the people who leaves their coffee cups and their plates every, I'm a total mess. Apologies <laughs> to everyone I work with or ever share an Airbnb with, I'm terrible. <laughs> um, so the next one is... Deep. Have you been mistaken for someone in a non-technical role, if you are in a technical role? Much smaller percentage of men being mistaken for being technical, much larger, 29% of women have been mistaken. Yeah. Uh, something else. How does that uh, gel with your own experiences? Well, it's been a long time since I've worked in a technical role. And because I'm a, generally a project manager, I actually seem to be conforming to the type, yeah, really, because yeah. there's a lot more women I've worked with that are project managers than men. Yeah, I do get an assumption, not that I'm in a, in a technical role, but I've been in WordPress for a long time, and people often assume that I don't really know, you know about functions, don't know about PHP, oh, yeah. um, and it's just like, you know, they, they have to dumb it down for me, despite the fact that I've want, written lots of technical documentation. Yeah. And I have code running in WordPress.org. It's really bad, but I think it's still there. So uh, <laughs> don't blame me if WordPress.org goes down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there is a general assumption that I kind of, I don't know. And, a, yeah. and you, know, yeah. you should never assume that about anyone. You shouldn't assume that a male is a developer and that a woman does yeah. not a developer or that she doesn't know about um, technical things. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is my final encouragement for you all to take the survey before I go on to talking about some of the ways that we can fix the ladder, because I feel like we've spent a lot of time talking. But um, So, Miriam Schwab from Elementor, who's always a great supporter, 
Um, she took the survey, and I'll just read out a little bit of this. She says, the survey helped me really hone in on what factors can indicate a gender equality issue in an organization and what to keep an eye on. Just filling it out was an insightful exercise in and of itself. So really, I encourage you all to fill it in because we will have a rich data set in which to give all of you a report, which then you can use to uh, you know, support your own organization. Yeah. But also, you'll get, you'll get some tips just by, by taking it. Um, exactly. OK, so let's talk about what WordPress businesses can do. Where do we start? Yeah, so we called this um, presentation Fixing the Ladder, because you know, we talk a lot about the glass ceiling, um, uh, which you know, have women face. But, uh, in the most recent, McKinsey does a study every year, a report on gender uh, diversity in the industries. And um, they talked in the most recent one about fixing the ladder. And that the issue is not the glass ceiling at the top, it's that first rung of the ladder. So getting women from IC roles into that entry level management. And what happens is that there is like a funneling. Uh, so for every 100 men promoted into an entry level uh, management role, only 87 women are promoted. And for it's even worse for women of color, only 82% re receive promotions for every man. So you can see, like, and then at the next stage, the pool is smaller, and then the pool is smaller again, and then the pool is smaller. And if we can get more women into those entry level, entry level. management positions, you know, you will be creating a bigger pool for those roles further along. Right. And this is like, uh, Oh, I can't read the stat. It says, so um, in EU countries, 33.8% uh, of positions in senior management are held by women. This is st uh, statistics put together by the uh, European Union. Um, women are 48.5%, nearly half of the workforce, but much less representation at senior management. Um, only 39.5% are managers at a more junior level. So you can see at each st stage, it gets smaller. Uh, so this is from the survey, um, and it's kind of the same story. 54% of people who responded to the survey report to a man, only 24% report to a woman. So the, there is a similar pattern in WordPress in that the managers are yeah, generally exactly. men. Um, and of, of course, because it's WordPress and a lot of companies are just like super chaotic or whatever, often people don't have managers yeah. as well. Um, OK. Oh. So when we were putting this together, you talked about the importance of using data to improve the outcomes and experience for women. How can organizations use data? And what impact can their use of that data have on women? Yeah, so I, my previous role at Human was in people operations. So we're really lucky these days because we've got loads of great HR systems. We use HiBob, but there's like a Personio or Bamboo. And I know everybody kind of hates them, but they're, all, they're also great. Um, and they give us um, loads of data that we can then use to track what is actually going on within right. our company. Same with like application tracking systems yeah. like Workable or um, Bullhorn. Yeah, there's, there's tons of them. We, we all use them. We all love them and hate them. Um, and so, this can help us track the whole way along the employee and hiring life cycle, yeah. like where we've got issues. So like things like hiring data. Are we getting a diverse pipeline? Are we successfully appointing diverse candidates? You know, wh where are the areas where we can make improvements? And there's things like promotion. Are women being promoted into the company, uh, into more management roles at the same sort of rate as men? Um, attrition is another one. What's the average tenure of women in the company versus men? Like, you know, if women are more women are leaving or have a shorter tenure, like why is why that? Is you know, it gives an opportunity to figure out why that is. Yeah. And obviously, salary data: uh, are women paid equi equitably to men in the same role? Um, there's also things like performance ratings. Uh, so looking at your managers, how they're rating performance for uh, for women versus men. Are there unconscious bias? Yeah. I mean, that's so important to to be, to be looking at things like that. And then engagement as well, of course. Um, engagement is such a powerful leading indicator of attrition. If you've got a low, uh, certainly at Human Made, we've seen this, um, if your engagement drops for a team and stays low, you often see like a, an exodus. Yeah. Um, and I think the there's a really important 
aspect of intersectionality in terms of data as well. Um, you know, you want to not just look at women generally, but then there's people who've got their marginalized identities, so women who are LGBTQ+, or women of color, and so you need to, like, um, dig into those metrics to, f to figure out really what's going on. Yeah. Um, another thing that you can do is you can look at external benchmarks. Uh, so in our survey, we've asked some of the same questions as the McKinsey study so that we can reflect on, like, our, how are we doing uh, within the Pushing industry? Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's talk about that first rung of the ladder. So companies decided that they are committed to make leadership spaces available to women, management spaces. Yeah. How do they do it? I think one of the most important things is making diversity and inclusion a core part of the strategy. This is not an add-on. This is not a, a, a you know a bolt-on that we or an extension or a plug-in really. Actually, yeah. uh, that this becomes okay. So this is something that we're dedicated to. That that, that we're really intentional about. That means being committed to the change, because this is a big change, and it does reflect a change uh, in the company. It, it reflects personal change, often in attitudes. So um, you need to be committed to, be, to go through that change and then to lead your team through that change. Uh, it requires actively focusing on implicit bias mm -hmm. uh, and, and identifying it and helping people. And, one of the, and certainly, personally, one of the most powerful things uh, that happened for me was, was just, uh, in the training that we've done together, was just fascinating to go, I had no idea that I had these blind spots. Mm. And then, and being able to recognize them and see them and address them was really, has been really so powerful. It's hard though, like, because you're just like, you don't want to have blind spots. You want to be like really right on all the time. And then you're like, actually, no, we all have our biases. Yeah. And we all have to, you know, the responsibility is not to not have bias, but yeah. to recognize, recognize bias and, understand and then put, in measures to work against that. Exactly, exactly. Um, creating leadership plans and pathways. Mm -hmm. uh, there also needs to be leadership and commitment from the top. This is not just uh, we're putting somebody in middle management to help organize this. This is this commitment from the top and leadership from them, which, as we've seen, the large percentage of men on this whole transformative journey. You need to bring your whole leadership team al along uh, and have their commitment and dedication to the process as well. There needs to be uh, inclusion baked into your succession planning uh, and setting measurable goals, increasing numbers of women leaders and instituting and executing plans that will actually make that happen. Mm, yeah, I think that the idea that it's not an add-on is so important. And from, uh, to be honest, I've been a t an asshole. Like, I've just been like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not really thinking about diversity at the minute because yeah. I've got to make money, you've got to make money, you've got to make money. Yeah. Um, but actually, um, especially doing all of this work as part of WP Includes, I just see how short-sighted that is. Yeah. And I really, I think WordPress business, when you're on that sort of pre-growth journey, that's the time to do it. Yeah. Because once you are like hiring lots and hiring lots, it becomes way yeah. more difficult. Exactly. So how can we make sure that women are ready for management uh, or men are ready for those opportunities as they come along? Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about sponsorship. Um, I mean, when I started WP Includes with uh, Francesca and then with Dee, um, Francesca said to me, uh, oh, do we, we, mentorships is all well and good, but women are uh, over-mentored and under-sponsored. I was like, yeah, cool. Sounds like something you'd put on a cup. Um, <laughs> And didn't really know what it meant. Uh, but then I, you know, in preparing for this talk, I did obviously research. I didn't just yeah. get up and stand and talk, talk shit. Um, and I learned a lot more about sponsorship and what it is. And actually, I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. That is not a slogan. That is so important. Yeah. And uh, it's such an important thing. So what is sponsorship? So sponsorship is a kind of helping relationship in which senior, powerful people use their personal clout to, to talk up advocate for and place more junior people in a key role. Um, so, oh, have I got a quote that I can read out? No. Uh, so I'm going to read this out. So while a mentor is someone who has knowledge and will share it with you, a sponsor is a person who has power and will use it for you. Yeah. And I think that's really the difference between WP Includes and, say, the business you work for. Like, we want to mentor women and provide them with our knowledge of and experience and support, but actually, what really matters is sponsorship, yeah. like internal sponsorship. 
Um, and that's, it, that's kind of hard for people because you're using your own personal capital to advocate for somebody who's more junior than you. Um, and you know, there, there's a certain amount of risk there. And so it's really important that you build relationships with, with, with people, with women who, or other people in other minorities who you could sponsor. Um, so when I learned, when I was reading about this, I was like, oh shit, yeah, I've done this. I've, I've sponsored like women and created, for example, with WordCamp Europe, like when I uh, was lead organizer for in Seville, I was like, I need a successor. And so I'm going to mentor this person and they are going to take the leadership. And, and, you know, thinking about it in that way. And I think the really important thing about sponsorship versus mentorship is your sponsor, if you have a sponsor, they're going to advocate for you when you're not there. You won't even know that they are saying, this is a great person, they should have this opportunity. Um, and certainly I've done it in the past. I haven't done it over the past two years because I haven't really thought about it. I'm now I'm starting to do it again and starting to think, okay, th these are talented women within my organization. Let's create opportunities for I them. I think one of the things that's interesting in that too is we tend to also uh, sponsor or think about the people that are like us. Yes, absolutely. And so one of the challenges that we have is actually putting, your, putting that outside of, you know, for me sponsoring another woman, or actually for the men that are in these leadership positions, actually not just thinking about the guy that you know that you've connected that you get along really well with, is also thinking about, well, who are the women that could also yes. come in here into this space and actually be actively fostering that yeah. as well. When I think about those like spaces, so in terms of people in similar with you, well, if you get a big group of blokes, maybe a couple of women there, but they're all like, like the, WordPress Community Summit, like you're building that network, you build those relationships, you build those trust, um, and then you're like, oh, I remember that person, yeah. and I'm going to put them forward for that thing. Yeah. But you, so you need to actively go out of your way yeah. to like learn about and get to know people who are not you're the normal people who you normally just gravitate exactly. towards. Yeah. Um, but there's there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Uh, you don't just have to like put people forward for projects or use up social your social capital. Um, so things you can do, like help them to strategize about how they can get ahead in your company. You can connect them. That's really a great way to help people is to connect them to other people in your network um, who you think could help them. Um, talk them up to other people. Say, D is great. Talk to D. You should talk to D. D is great. <laughs> um, uh, share what they post on social media. Um, and I think really suggest them for projects yeah. um, that, um, that they could own and show, like take, that would help them to progress within their career. Right. Uh, so I guess a final so thought on sponsorship. Oh, I carry on. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. You're getting ahead of yourself. Uh, no, I just wanted to say one final thing. 4% of uh, WordPress 5 for the Future organizations are um, led by women. Most of them are led by men. And so those men can find women to sponsor within those organizations and create opportunities to them. Yeah. Um, and you are the people. You are the people who make opportunities for women. I will do my best, but uh, you know, th there's so few women <laughs> that uh, the, the opportunities that we can create are limited. So it really is a call to all of you to, to sponsor women, sponsor particularly women of color, women who are LGBTQ+, who are also very underrepresented. And, you know, and that's where we will see change. Yeah. So anyway, sorry for getting ahead. So <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question now, is that right? You are. I am. OK, so one of the things I hear from leadership teams, and I say myself, uh, to be honest, is they don't know where or how to recruit senior women. And I have really struggled with that, you know, particularly into sales commercial roles. There's very few women in the talent pool and in engineering roles as well. Mm -hmm. The kind of unicorns. Um, so what advice do you have for them? Uh, implement sponsorship programs mm. so that actually just becomes part to, baked into the process. We're senior leaders advocate for high potential women, helping them navigate career path and gain visibility. Actively creating spaces in your networking programs for women. Uh, be transparent about salaries and offer competitive salaries. And mandate, I mean, there's a whole list, but mandate this, the percentage of women candidates must be interviewed for leadership roles. And I think that's one's really important. Mm. You hear so often that, uh, oh, well, we just didn't get enough applicants, or the applicants that we get that weren't enough, but that actively strategizing and hiring and actually 
going out there rather than just waiting for everybody to come to you, I think is really, really important. Yeah, I think that what you said about networking, you said networking first. I did say networking. Uh, so we were at the Scale Consortium event on Wednesday night and I was super impressed that so many women were there. And I think events like those, inviting women to those, both those who are in leadership roles and who have potential, yeah. so they can create networks and also maybe meet someone from another company who might put them into a VP or C-level position. That, right. That's, that's really, exactly. really important. Just the, those spaces have got to be inclusive. I think there's some other, uh, the one that, I, that stuck out for me that was interesting was incentivizing your referral targets. Mm. So if you have referral programs within your organization where if somebody introduces uh, someone to the company, and I was certainly introduced to Human Made. Uh, I don't know if the, I don't know if the, uh, Pete and Bronson got a referral for that. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but certainly, if you have those kind of programs in place, actually uh, adjust it so that there are increased incentives for referring women, um, and also, of course, don't overlook the existing talent. It's mm. actually having programs in or structures within your organisation. Yeah that is recognizing and nurturing all the talent, obviously, but focusing on not just nurturing people for where they are and maybe that next step, but also looking further ahead to where else they might be able to, uh, to contribute. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think for succession planning comes Of, of course, well. yeah, it's all part and parcel of that. Like, having uh, a succession plan uh, for where women are the successors of people in you know, management or senior roles is like a great way to start bringing women through your organization. Uh, and the last one I have on my list is, is creating programs to train and support women who are returning to the work uh, workforce. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, when, something that we, um, I've been reflecting on at Human Made is like, we're not doing loads of hiring at the minute, so this is the time to hire uh, women. Because when you're in like a high growth period, you're getting loads of candidates loads and loads of men candidates in your hiring pipeline and you're just like I need to hire, I need to hire, I need to hire, I need to hire and then all of a sudden you're like looking around the room and you're like oh, oh everybody yeah. looks the same yeah um so like when you're hiring slowly in a less reactive manner you can really like that's the time that you can really factor that in so you've recruited your first or your female leader how do you make her feel welcome and set her up for success yeah, so I have been the only woman on a male, all-male executive team, uh, one, some of whom are here. <laughs> uh, and I have to say, when the first women uh, joined the executive team, it's also there, I, I was just much happier. I mean, I felt much more comfortable within my role. And, you know, generally work day to day, it was fine. But certainly there was times when we were away together that I'd just be like, oh, it'd be really nice to have a woman here as well. Um, you know, it's just because you feel it. You feel I'm different and you always are aware that you're different. Um, and so having someone who's similar to you really helps you to build that psychological safety that is really important. So I think, you know, uh, one of the things that Francesca and I talked about um, before this um, presentation was how, when she became the first female uh, leader at XWP, the, how welcome they made her feel. And they went out of their way to welcome her and to try to figure out, okay, well, the dynamics of this team are going to be different now. And so we have to, like, think about that. Um, and actually, it, it shouldn't be the woman's responsibility yeah. to change and think about all of those dynamics. It's, it's the team's responsibility. Yeah. And you've got to know that the, the whole team has got to know the value of a diverse team. Um, and I think something that's key for me and kind of gets forgotten is it's really important to celebrate the different ways one can be a leader. Yeah. Leadership is often associated with sort of aggression and being very directional and very hierarchical. And that's, you know, often women's skill sets are, are slightly different. Um, so there was a study by Catalyst. Um, I'm going to read some of the quote, but I can't see the whole thing. So um, it says that women leaders are subjected to extreme perceptions. And so I'm just going to paraphrase, para, paraphrase, paraphrase. Uh, this a little bit. So when women act in gender consistent ways, so you're cooperative, relationship focused, you're perceived as being too soft to be a leader. Um, but when you are a gender inconsistent, when you're authoritative, you're ambitious, you know, you're pushy and you focus uh, on be 
viewed as too tough. Um, and you're accused of acting as a man um, and being overly aggressive. So it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you are you know, acting in ways that are consistent with you or if you're like, really trying to like, lean in and be like, ugh. Um, you can't win. You can't win. And that is something that women always have to face. And yeah. you know, women in leadership roles um, you know, are faced with it all of the time. Yeah. Uh, there's much more to talk about. And we'll be sharing more about how you can support women and other minor minority groups uh, in the results of, yes. the, of the survey. So we have got the um, survey will be closing at the end of June. Please fill it in. Please give it to everybody in your companies to fill in. What we want to achieve here is to, A, we'll share the survey results in an, an anonymous and confidential way, but also talk about the various the things that the WordPress businesses specifically can do to get more women into leadership roles in their organizations. And so we want it to be something like this that's really, really helpful. Yeah. Um, uh, I think some people, when we were doing it, were like, oh, you're just doing this to shame men. Um, I don't care. I don't want to shame men. <laughs> Preaching no, no, about no, why no. waste your time doing that. Yeah. Um, uh, this is about helping us all get better as a community. Um, so, also, we're if you were currently looking for new mentors and mentees for WP Includes, uh, the last um, it's like a five-month program. It went really well. Everyone got, got a lot of out of it. So, if you would like to um, apply, you can do that through the website. Um, and finally, if you want to chat to us, we're going to go to the Do the Woo. It's not, it's, does that say 3 p.m.? It uh, it's not at 3 p.m. It's at 12.30 p.m. Oh, get past the slide. Um, so we'll be at the, the Do the Woo thing at 12.30, not 3. Um, and you can just come and chat with us about, well, anything, but particularly this. I want to thank uh, crowd favorite human made next WP who have been supporting us and, and you know, we uh, don't want uh, women to do free labor, so we've, we were paying someone to do all of the research and the, re the report for us, and that's really important. Um, so finally, take the survey. There's a QR code. We made it easy for you. Just get that QR code, take the survey, share it with your organization. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. So. Yeah, we had so much to talk about, and you talked about a lot of stuff. Oh, we compacted in a lot, didn't we? <laughs> yes, yes. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. We learned a lot. <laughs> Thank uh, you. And I think you should be on the stage every WordCamp. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> Have a little present. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Oh, this is super nice. Oh, yes. Um, we have uh, three minutes, so if one of you has a very good question in mind, you want to ask these two ladies. We have one microphone, and I see James standing there. Hello. Hi, James. Hi. Um, oh, there he is. My, my question, um, so a lot of the things that you spoke about around programs and, and leadership roles for women um, are great when your organization is large enough to have those levels available. Uh, I'm curious if you have any thoughts for probably the majority of WordPress companies that are maybe 30 people and under, or even less, 15 and under, how they can be proactively working to create opportunities for women when maybe there aren't leadership roles available and won't be for a while. Yeah, um, great question. That is true, like a lot of WordPress organizations are pretty small, and it takes a while to scale into needing like hierarchy. I think, um, I think the sort of succession planning, like internal sponsorship is really important and um, sponsoring and creating opportunities for women within your own organization and without, outside your organization. So things like getting them to represent you at WordCamp, speaking at WordCamps, and providing like, um, potentially providing like speaker training for them and helping them to progress within their career because there's, there's, there's leadership as a title and then there's like there's leadership that you do just by, you know, being part of your team and I think supporting women to do that. Is I feel like fun. there's hiring, you know, the, we do tend, well, even while you're small, you do tend to hire people that are like you. You do, yes. So, so be actively hiring and looking to hire. Absolutely. And, then, and, and even in some of that process, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we couldn't, didn't have time to talk about was 
was, was a, and, and how you attract women. So it's writing your job descriptions mm. that are female friendly or yep. you know, obvious about some of those kinds of things. So hire more women so that as you grow, you're, you're starting with a wide pool rather than that narrow pool. Yeah, be, be the type of company that a woman wants to work at. Like I have yeah. been at work camps and sometimes companies represent themselves as, as very male. male. Yep. And I would be like, I'm not going to work there. Yeah. So I think always being aware of that, and uh, this is really important. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Another uh, great applause for Dee and Siobhan. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, <laughs>